of the, uh, you know, struggle to uh, vision, or more than vision, to remake society in 10 years, when in 20 years we we're going to be carried off in chariots. I, well, I'm not sure. Maybe, I mean, I'm not sure. Maybe no, we should. I think the whole idea of the eschaton might be one of those ideas working militantly most strongly against any social change. Let's just hang on to our flying carpets. Well, you may be right. So in that, if that were true, would you think it a good thing or a bad thing? Well, just in case the eschaton doesn't snatch us from the fire. Yeah, that's what I have. What to do if the end of time is postponed? Is a couple of <laughs> <laughs> Images. I think we need to think of a trigger, what you call a clarion call in your book. And, um, well, we want to avoid the use of the word revolution due to the fact that that always polarizes a equal and opposite reaction, which we don't want to trigger. But call it an evolution. An evolution. In the past, mm -hmm. there have been all of these, um, you know, popular uprisings where actually the trigger came. We don't care who's elected, really, on the 2nd of November for President of the United States because the government follows. It doesn't lead. We need leadership now. Leadership comes from people. That's us. So um, we, we don't want a violent revolution and destroying all these buildings downtown. But somehow we would like to see, within seven years, a kind of a wake-up where a certain number of people just woke up and said, that's enough of that. That's all what we, the idea, and then um, to start doing it. What, we don't even know whatever triggered one of these major social transformations of the past, such as, let's say, the Renaissance, or the one we actually lived through the 1960s. What triggered it? I know what you'd say. <laughs> it's too obvious, it's what anyone would say.